Hi, this is Fizz30141 video 8. In this video we will start to introduce the idea of radiation from an accelerated charge. But before we do that we should revisit the idea of potentials. So as we saw before, on the left I have a stationary charge and I depict the electric field which is emanating away from that charge. And we already saw that it is possible to show that the magnetic, the electric field around a moving charge is compressed some typical angle, 1 over gamma, where gamma is a relativistic factor, and the field is compressed transversely to the direction of motion, which is shown here as the velocity vector v, or equivalently as a vector which is composed of beta, the relativistic factor, and a direction. Now in both these cases, the electric field falls as 1 over r squared, and we discussed in the, in the early videos uh, how this is uh, not part of a possible radiation field. We can also show that the magnetic field created by a single moving charge can be deduced in the following way. We have the velocity vector of the moving charge, we have the observation uh, position r, and we can also show that the magnetic field falls as 1 over r squared similarly to the way the electric field also falls as 1 over r squared. So this is the component of our discussion about um, the observation of electric field at some distance. We should also talk about um, these equations for the uh, potentials phi and a that we derived in a previous lecture and we showed that these potentials um, are, can be obtained and depend independently on the charge density and the current um, at any particular location. And in the static case, we could show that if, the, if there is no time variation, that the potentials depend upon the positions of the charges. So this is the uh, scalar potential and the vector potential depends upon the disposition of the currents. In other words, what the currents are doing in any given direction and at any given location. So this is our static potential case. But we do need to look at what happens if the charges and currents are changing as a function of time. And we will relate that to our discussion of, a, of an accelerated charge in due course. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. Here is our static case. So I have some volume V over which there may be some charges and currents. So, for example, in this location here, I will have an amount of charge dq, which is uh, due to some uh, charge density at that location, rho, rho of r primed, in that, in that small element of the vo overall volume v primed, dv primed. So, to get the static scalar potential, I need to add up all those charges, so r primed is the location of that charge piece within that volume, and I need to add up all of those over the volume V primed, that's why I'm taking the integral over V primed, and by obtaining the potential, this potential here is the potential as seen at this observation location over here, which has vector R. So clearly, the potential at this location, due to this charge over here, depends on this distance R minus R primed. Now everything is the same for the vector potential. The only difference is that we have three sets of currents. Remember we said that there were three equations hidden, hidden in here. So now we imagine three pieces of current. I've got a current moving in the positive x direction, a current moving in the positive y direction, and in the z direction. And for each of those, I can obtain a vector potential, but the same principle applies. For each particular place within the volume where there might be a current flowing, I need to add up how much current I have at that location, the current density, and then integrate over that volume. And then the vector potential I see at this location is due to the current at that location over here. Now this is all fine in the static case, but what happens if the charge at this location changes um, as a function of time? Imagine I'm observing over here and I see a potential due to this piece of charge over here, this, this gets added up. What happens if this charge moves 
from this location to somewhere else, or equivalently that the charge density at that location has changed. Well, I won't know about it for, a, for the amount of time it takes for light to propagate from this location to this location. So that's the difference between a static potential and a dynamic potential. So here is our dynamic case. And the important difference is that the distances between each of these individual pieces of charge in this volume is different as observed by a particular observer over here. So we are imagining what does this observer see? This observer, we imagine, is observing at some particular time t. Well, clearly, the piece of charge, or the, the potential due to a piece of charge, is what's happening in this location at some earlier time, at some retarded time. So to work out the solution for our scalar and vector potentials, in, these, in this dynamic case, we need to use the values of rho and j, which occur at these earlier times. So if I'm observing at a time t, the potential I see is, uh, is is due to the charges at this retarded time where I need to subtract off the time it takes for the charge for the information to travel from each of these particular places. So this retarded time over here will be different for each of the different charges and currents over this volume. So the retarded time leads naturally to the idea of the retarded potential.